Hello, I'm Professor Peraza, and today's lecture video covers micronutrients. These are the specific learning objectives for this module. This module also meets the following course learning objectives. We reviewed vitamins and minerals briefly in the beginning of the course. We're going to discuss each of the essential vitamins and minerals in this lecture. Vitamins are organic micronutrients that are classified as water-soluble or fat-soluble. Water-soluble vitamins in particular play a role in energy metabolism, and they are required as functional parts of enzymes involved in energy release and storage. The water-soluble vitamins include vitamin C, which you can find in citrus fruits, and B vitamins, which can be found in animal products and plants. Water-soluble vitamins are absorbed directly from the small intestine into the bloodstream. With water-soluble vitamins, there is a limited storage capacity in the body, which means daily intake is more important. With the limited storage, deficiency of water-soluble vitamins is more likely and toxicity is more rare. Fat-soluble vitamins are first incorporated into chylomicrons, along with fat, fatty acids, and transported through the lymphatic system to the bloodstream and then onto the liver. Because fat-soluble vitamins are absorbed along with dietary fat, if a meal is very low in fat, the absorption of fat-soluble vitamins in that meal may be impaired. Fat-soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K can be stored in the liver and fatty tissues in the body. Vitamin A can be found in orange-colored vegetables like carrots, vitamin E in nuts and oils, vitamin D in fortified dairy, and vitamin K in leafy greens. Minerals are inorganic elements that we obtain by eating plants and animals since they consume minerals and plants consume. We can also obtain minerals from water. Minerals are classified as either major or trace. Major minerals are needed in larger quantities, more than 100 milligrams a day, and include sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, and sulfur. Trace minerals are needed in quantities of less than 100 milligrams a day and include iron, copper, zinc, selenium, iodine, chromium, fluoride, manganese, and molybdenum. Minerals are absorbed directly into the bloodstream, and some need transport proteins for absorption and transportation in the blood. Processing foods can reduce nutrient content. The nutrient content of a food is typically at its peak when ripened on the plant. Water-soluble vitamins are the most susceptible to the effects of processing versus fat-soluble vitamins. Heat, light, air, and alkaline substances can impact nutrient content. B vitamins and C are best retained by steaming, stir-frying, and microwaving, which limit exposure to heat and water. Boiling and dumping the water can mean minerals are lost through the cooking water. There are vitamins in the bodies that are made from precursors, and these include vitamin A, vitamin D, and niacin. Vitamin A, for example, is found in beta-carotene, a provitamin in red-orange fruits and vegetables. The body can convert beta-carotene to vitamin A in the small intestine. Vitamin D can be synthesized in the skin from the sun. Niacin can be made in the liver from the amino acid tryptophan, when tryptophan is available in quantities greater than needed for protein synthesis. Lastly, vitamin K could be synthesized by bacteria in the gut. The dietary guidelines recommend that individuals obtain their nutrient needs primarily from foods and beverages. If needed, fortified foods and dietary supplements can be useful to fill nutrient gaps. Dietary supplements are not intended to replace a healthy diet. In addition to vitamins, dietary supplements can contain minerals, herbs, or other botanicals, amino acids, enzymes, and many other ingredients. Forms of supplements include everything from tablets to capsules, powders, and drinks. There are many instances when dietary supplements would be appropriate. If someone is following a very low calorie diet or post-bariatric surgery, supplementation will be recommended as they may not be able to get all the micronutrients needed in a small volume of food consumed. With bariatric surgery, nutrient absorption may also be limited. Vitamin D is another popular supplement, as often individuals may be deficient. It is recommended to check vitamin D levels prior to starting a supplement, as over-the-counter doses may not be high enough to correct for a deficiency. Babies who are exclusively breastfed are also recommended to have supplemental vitamin D. 
Iron may be necessary for those with a heavy menstrual cycle and also during pregnancy to prevent anemia. During pregnancy, folic acid is recommended to prevent neural tube defects. Lastly, vitamin B12 as a supplement will be recommended for those following a vegan diet as it can be hard to obtain reliable sources in a plant-based diet. Vitamin B12 is necessary for the formation of red blood cells. We are going to start off first with the micronutrients involved in fluid and electrolyte balance. Before we get to that, we need to discuss water. Water is the most critical of all the nutrients as we need water for transportation, as a medium for chemical reactions, as a temperature regulator, and for fluid balance. Water is the largest component of the human body, and many physiological functions depend on water. In the human body, water is distributed into two compartments, inside cells, called intracellular fluid, and outside cells, called extracellular fluid. Intra extracellular fluid includes both the fluid component of the blood, called plasma, and the interstitial fluid that surrounds all cells not in the blood. Water in the body is made up of solutes that are critical to life, and these include electrolytes, sodium, potassium, and chloride. These electrolytes are crucial for water balance, acid-base balance, and assisting in the transmission of electrical impulses along cell membranes in nerves and muscles. To maintain water and electrolyte balance, cells control the movement of electrolytes across their membranes, and water follows the electrolytes by osmosis. The AI for water is 15 cups, 3.7 liters for adult men, and 11 cups, 2.7 liters for adult women. This water can come from plain water, other beverages like coffee, tea, or juice, or fruits and vegetables which contain water. In a typical U.S. diet, solid foods provide about 20% of water, so then the 80% of water from fluid translates to a daily fluid intake of about 13 cups, or 3 liters for men, and 9 cups for women, 2.2 liters. The effects of dehydration range from thirst to death, depending on the extent of water weight lost. It was once thought that caffeinated beverages cause dehydration. However, research shows that although caffeine is a mild diuretic, intakes up to 500 milligrams a day, or four and a half cups of brewed coffee, do not cause dehydration or water imbalance in most people. Alcohol, on the other hand, can lead to dehydration as ethanol increases urine output but in, by inhibiting the antidiuretic hormone, which is the hormone that helps control the amount of fluid lost in the urine. Sodium is the first electrolyte we will review. Functions of sodium include aiding in water balance, helping to absorb glucose and some amino acids in the small intestine, and is also needed for normal nerve and muscle function. While sodium is important, normal physiological functions can be met with much less than 2300 milligrams a day, which is the daily value. Sodium is naturally found in whole foods, however, the majority of an individual's intake in the U.S. is through processed and prepared foods as manufacturers add salt to improve texture and flavor and also act as a preservative. Sodium balance is regulated by the kidneys, so deficiency and toxicity are not very common. If an individual is exercising strenuously and consuming excessive amounts of water without replacing electrolytes, this can dilute sodium in the blood, leading to hyponatremia, or low blood sodium concentrations. As a result, the cells swell with water and can burst if the imbalance is severe and prolonged. With an individual who is excessively exercising without consuming adequate amounts of fluid, they can become dehydrated and hypernatremia can occur, which is elevated blood sodium levels. The high concentration of sodium in the extracellular fluid causes water to leave cells by osmosis, making them shrink. Another concern with elevated sodium intake is a risk factor for hypertension. Potassium is the most abundant, positively charged electrolyte in the intracellular fluid. We need potassium for fluid balance, nerve transmission, and muscle contraction. Potassium is found in a wide variety of plant and animal foods and in beverages. Good sources include legumes, like soybeans, and potatoes. Meats, poultry, fish, milk, yogurt, and nuts also contain potassium. The Dietary Guidelines identifies potassium as a dietary component of public health concern. The recommendation for potassium is 2,600 milligrams for adult women 
and 3,400 milligrams for adult men. Severe potassium deficiency can cause hypokalemia, which is low blood potassium. This is usually due to the use of diuretics and other medications, but is rare among healthy people with normal kidney function. In healthy people with normal kidney function, high dietary potassium intakes do not pose a health risk because the kidneys eliminate excess amounts in the urine. A concern with high intakes of potassium would be hyperkalemia, which is high blood levels of potassium that can occur when kidney function is poor. Since there is no evidence that high intakes of potassium cause hyperkalemia in adults with normal kidney function or other adverse effects, there's no set UL. Chloride is prominent in intracellular fluid and one of the most important extracellular anions. Functions of chloride include fluid balance, acid-base balance, and nerve cell transmission. Dietary chloride deficiency is rare, and most chloride in the diet comes from salt. Other sources include whole grains and seafood. The AI for chloride is 2,300 milligrams. Toxicity is rare with chloride, but the UL is set at 3,600 milligrams for adults. Antioxidants are molecules that can donate an electron to stabilize and neutralize free radicals, which are unstable compounds that are highly reactive. Free radicals can cause oxidative stress, which can lead to cell damage. Diseases associated with oxidative stress include cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and eye diseases such as cataracts and age-related macular degeneration. Sources of antioxidants include plant-based foods like fruits and vegetables. Dietary antioxidants include vitamin C and E, selenium, and the carotenoids, beta-carotene, lycopene, lutein, and zeaxanthin. Vitamin E is really a family of compounds that include eight chemical forms. Alpha tocopherol is the only form that is recognized to meet human needs. Vitamin E also acts as an antioxidant and is involved in immune function and other metabolic processes. The RDA for vitamin E is 15 milligrams for adult men and women. Sources include nuts, seeds, and vegetable oils as the highest, and also green leafy vegetables and fortified cereals. Deficiency of vitamin E is rare, but can occur with individuals who have fat malabsorption conditions like Crohn's disease or cystic fibrosis. Although there is no concern for high amounts of vitamin E consumption via foods, there is with supplementation. Toxicity of vitamin E can lead to hemorrhage and interfere with blood clotting. The UL is set at 1,000 milligrams for adults. Vitamin C, which is also known as ascorbic acid, is a water-soluble vitamin and antioxidant that we are unable to synthesize. Vitamin C is needed for biosynthesis of collagen, which is a component of connective tissue, and needed for wound healing and certain neurotransmitters. It is also involved in protein metabolism, immune function, and also increases the absorption of non-heme iron. The best sources of vitamin C are fruits and vegetables with the highest concentration in citrus fruits, tomatoes, peppers, broccoli, and berries. The RDA for vitamin C is 75 milligrams for adult women and 90 milligrams for adult men. Individuals who smoke require 35 milligrams per day more vitamin C than non-smokers. Vitamin C deficiency is rare in the U.S. There is an associated deficiency condition called scurvy in which signs can appear within one month of little to no vitamin C, less than 10 milligrams a day. Initial symptoms can include fatigue and inflammation of the gums and progress to petechia, poor wound healing, hyperkeratosis, depression, bleeding gums, and loss of teeth. While toxicity for vitamin C is fairly low and not associated with serious adverse effects, there is a UL set at 2,000 milligrams. Side effects can include diarrhea, nausea, and abdominal cramps. Selenium is a trace mineral that is essential for reproduction, thyroid hormone metabolism, DNA synthesis, and protection from oxidative stress. The highest sources of selenium are Brazil nuts, seafood, and organ meats. The RDA for selenium is 55 micrograms. Deficiency of selenium is rare, but can be due to viral infections, those undergoing hemodialysis, or those living with HIV. Selenium deficiency can be connected to male infertility, osteoarthritis, and also make an iodine deficiency worse. There is a UL set for selenium at 400 micrograms to prevent selenosis in which the hair and nail loss or brittleness can occur. Other signs and symptoms include nausea, diarrhea, skin rashes, fatigue, 
irritability, and nervous system abnormalities. Let's talk about vitamin A, which is a group of fat-soluble retinoids. Vitamin A has many crucial functions, including immune health, growth and development, cellular communication, and reproduction. Vitamin A is critical during fetal life for formation and maintenance of the heart, lungs, and eyes, and also for vision. Vitamin A can be found in liver, fish, eggs, leafy greens, orange and yellow vegetables, and tomato products. Deficiency of vitamin A in the U.S. is rare, and deficiency symptoms will take time to develop since there is a storage of vitamin A in the liver. The most common clinical sign of a vitamin A deficiency is xeropathamia. The first sign is night blindness, which can be permanent blindness. With deficiency, you can also see conjunctival xerosis, which is dryness of the conjunctiva, bitted spots, which are foamy gray spots in the eyes, and keratomalacia, which is softening of the cornea. Because vitamin A is fat soluble, the body stores excessive amounts, primarily in the liver, and those levels can accumulate. Toxicity is a concern primarily with preformed vitamin A that exceeds the UL of 3,000 mic micrograms. Beta carotene is not known to be toxic in large volumes. Those long-term excessive use can lead to carotinemia, which is the, when the skin becomes yellow-orange. It is harmless and reversible with discontinued ingestion of beta carotene. Hypervitaminosis A is acute toxicity that can occur within days to weeks after a high dose that is usually 100 times the RDA. Chronic hypervitaminosis A can lead to dry skin, painful muscles and joints, and abnormal liver tests. Toxic levels of vitamin A can also lead to birth defects and miscarriages. Let's review bone health. The human skeleton consists of 206 bones and other connective tissues that together support and protect many organs, produce red and white blood cells, and act as a storage depot for minerals such as calcium, phosphorus, and magnesium. Bone is living tissue made up of collagen minerals. Bone is continually being built, broken down, and reshaped in a process called remodeling. This is vital to repair and replace damaged or brittle areas and also permits calcium and phosphorus to be withdrawn and used for other functions. There are specific cells that are responsible for this bone remodeling. Osteoclasts are responsible for bone resorption or breakdown. The osteoclasts release acid and enzymes that dissolve bone. Osteoblasts are continuing to build bone and osteocytes maintain the bone matrix. When bone loss exceeds the rate at which bone is rebuilt, bone mass and strength decline and risk of fracture increases. Osteoporosis is a bone disease that develops when bone mineral density and bone mass decreases or when the structure and strength of bone changes. This can lead to a decrease in bone strength that can increase the risk of fractures. Osteoporosis is typically diagnosed with a DEXA scan to measure bone mineral density. The sites most prone to fracture are the hip and spine. There are many steps that someone could take to prevent osteoporosis, including avoiding smoking, maintaining a nutritious diet rich in calcium and vitamin D, engaging in physical activity, but specifically weight-bearing activities, avoiding excessive intake of alcohol, and taking any medications as prescribed. Calcium is the mineral with the greatest storage in the human body. Calcium is critical to bone health as it makes up much of the structure of bones and teeth. About 98% of calcium is stored in the bones as a reservoir. Calcium also plays a role in muscle function, blood clotting, nerve transmission, and hormonal secretions. Blood levels of calcium are tightly controlled in the body. If your blood calcium levels fall below normal, your parathyroid gland releases parathyroid hormone, which increases the kidney's reabsorption of calcium and allows for withdrawal of calcium from your bones. This means that checking serum levels of calcium would not reflect nutritional status. Food sources of calcium include milk, yogurt, cheese, salmon with bones, kale, and broccoli. The absorption of calcium from dairy products is about 30%. Spinach is often touted as a high calcium source. However, the oxalic acid in spinach can reduce calcium absorption to only about 5%. The RDA for calcium is 1,000 milligrams for adults. Hypocalcemia, or low blood levels of calcium, usually are due to a deficiency of vitamin D or magnesium, which then impairs parathyroid hormone production and bone resorption of calcium. Other causes of hypocalcemia include certain medications or critical illness. 
A deficiency can lead to reduced bone strength and osteoporosis. It can also cause rickets in kids and osteomalacia in adults or children. The UL for calcium is 2,000 milligrams per day. Hypercalcemia, which is elevated blood levels of calcium, can be due to cancer or hyperparathyroidism. Phosphorus, which is the second most abundant mineral in the human body, is a component of bones, teeth, DNA, and RNA. Phosphorus is also a component of the cell membrane structure in the form of phospholipids and also plays a role in the activation of enzymes. Many different types of foods can contain phosphorus, including dairy products, meats, and poultry, fish, eggs, nuts, legumes, vegetables, and grains. The RDA for phosphorus is 700 milligrams for adults. A deficiency of phosphorus, known as hypophosphatemia, is rare in the U.S. and typically secondary to a condition like DKA, hyperparathyroidism, and kidney tubule defects. There is a UL set for phosphorus set at 3,000 milligrams a day, though this is rare in healthy individuals. The ULs do not apply to individuals who are receiving supplemental phosphorus under medical supervision. Magnesium is a mineral that is a cofactor in more than 300 enzyme systems that regulate reactions like protein synthesis, muscle and nerve function, blood glucose control, and blood pressure regulation. Magnesium is required for energy production, oxidative phosphorylation, and glycolysis. Sources include green leafy vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. The RDA for magnesium is 310 milligrams for adult women and 410 mil 420 milligrams for adult men. Magnesium deficiency is not likely in otherwise healthy people. However, low intakes or losses due to health conditions like alcohol use disorder or the use of certain medications can contribute. Signs can range from, lo range from loss of appetite, nausea, and weakness to numbness, seizures, and muscle cramps. The UL for magnesium is set at 350 milligrams per day. Typically, high intakes of magnesium from foods is not a concern due to the kidney's role in eliminating excess magnesium in the urine. However, this can be a concern with someone who has impaired renal function. Fluoride is a mineral that plays a role in stimulating new bone formation and also inhibiting or reversing the start of dental caries or tooth decay. Most fluoride consumed comes from fluoridated water, toothpaste, and other dental products containing fluoride. Black tea, coffee, and canned shrimp are also sources. The AI for fluoride is 3 mg for adult women and 4 mg for adult men. Although there isn't a specific deficiency condition, inadequate fluoride can pose a risk for dental caries since fluoride inhibits demineralization and the activity of bacteria and dental plaque. The UL for fluoride is 10 mg for adults. High doses can result in nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and death in rare cases. Long-term ingestion of excess, excess fluoride in infancy and childhood can also lead to dental fluorosis, which can lead to white lines or brown stains on the teeth. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that can be obtained from sun exposure, foods, and supplements. Vitamin D promotes calcium absorption in the gut, is needed for bone growth and remodeling, and helps to protect against osteoporosis. Vitamin D also plays a role in processes such as cell growth and glucose metabolism. Sources of vitamin D include fortified milk from cows or plant sources like soy. Few foods naturally contain vitamin D. However, outside of fortified products, the flesh of fatty fish and fish liver oils are good sources. The recommendation is for 600 IUs of vitamin D for adults. Vitamin D deficiency can manifest in a few ways, as rickets in children or osteomalacia in adults. Rickets is characterized by inadequate mineralization of the bones caused by poor calcium deposits during growth. This results in soft bones and skeletal deformities. Osteomalacia is a result of poor bone mineralization leading to inadequate vitamin D. This can lead to hip and spine fractures. There is a UL for vitamin D set at 4,000 IUs. Excessive vitamin D can lead to hypercalcemia, which can lead to nausea, vomiting, polyuria, and kidney stones. Excessive sun exposure is not likely to result in vitamin D toxicity since excessive amounts are degraded. Let's review micronutrients and energy metabolism. B vitamins and some minerals play a role in energy metabolism. Vitamins that bind to enzymes are referred to as coenzymes, organic molecules which are required by enzymes to catalyze a specific reaction. 
Cofactors are the inorganic minerals that assist in these enzymatic reactions. Coenzymes and cofactors are essential in catabolic pathways, breaking down substances, and play a role in many anabolic pathways, building substances. B vitamins are needed to support energy metabolism and growth, but taking in more than required does not supply you with more energy. B vitamins are water-soluble, which means there's not much storage in the body, and excessive amounts will typically be excreted from the body. Folate is a water-soluble vitamin, specifically B9. Folate is the form naturally found in foods. Folic acid is found in supplements and fortified items. Folate has many key functions in the body, including being involved in the synthesis of DNA and RNA, metabolism of amino acids, and being a part of cell division. Folate is found naturally in many foods, including dark green leafy vegetables, fruits, nuts, beans, peas, poultry, grains, and asparagus. The RDA for folate is 400 micrograms for adults. Folate deficiency typically coexists with other nutrient deficiencies. Megaloblastic anemia, which is characterized by large, abnormally nucleated red blood cells, is the primary clinical sign of folate or B12 deficiency. Symptoms range from fatigue to heart palpitations and weakness. Neural tube defects can arise with a folate deficiency during pregnancy. Folate is critical for the synthesis of DNA. Neural tube defects result in malformations of the spine, skull, and brain. The most common types are spina bifida and encephaly, which result from the failure of the neural tube to close at either the upper or lower end on days 21 to 28 after conception. There is a UL for folic acid set at 1,000 micrograms, which is equivalent to 1,667 micrograms of DFE. Concerns are that high levels of folic acid can mask a B12 deficiency. There is no UL for folate from foods since no adverse effects have been reported. Vitamin B12, a water-soluble vitamin that contains the mineral cobalt, is needed for many functions, including development and function of the central nervous system, red blood cell formation, and DNA synthesis. Vitamin B12 functions as a cofactor for two enzymes. Vitamin B12 is bound to protein in food, which means it needs to be released before it can be absorbed. You can find B12 in animal products like fish, meat, poultry, and eggs. Fortified cereals and nutritional yeast are also sources. The RDA for B12 is 2.4 micrograms for adults. Deficiency of B12 can take several years to appear as the body stores B12. Causes of deficiency can be due to issue absorbing B12, lack of intrinsic factor relating to pernicious anemia, surgery, certain medications like metformin, or inadequate intake. One of the effects of a B12 deficiency includes megaloblastic anemia, which is when the red blood cells are large and abnormally nucleated. B12 deficiency can also lead to glossitis of the tongue, fatigue, infertility, numbness, and tingling in the hands and feet, and weight loss. Typically, B12 deficiency is treated with B12 injections to bypass the GI system. High doses of oral B12 may also be utilized. There is new, no UL for B12 since the risk of toxicity is low and the body does not store excessive amounts. This next section, we are going to talk about blood health. Blood is essential to life as it transports absorbed nutrients and oxygen to cells, removes metabolic waste products, and carries substances like hormones. There are four components of blood, and they include red blood cells, which transport oxygen to the cells, white blood cells, which are part of the immune system and aid in destroying foreign invaders, platelets, which are fragments of the cells that circulate to assist in blood clotting, and plasma, which is the fluid portion of the blood. Iron is a mineral that is an essential component of hemoglobin and myoglobin. Iron plays a role in transferring oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. Iron is necessary for growth, neurological development, and synthesis of some hormones. There are two forms of iron, heme and non-heme. Heme is found in animal products like seafood, chicken, and meat. Non-heme is found in plants like grains, nuts, beans, and fortified grains. Breast milk contains highly bioavailable iron, but in amounts that are not sufficient to meet the needs of infants older than four to six months. Consuming vitamin C with non-heme iron foods will enhance bioavailability. The RDA for iron is 18 milligrams for adult women and eight milligrams for adult men. Iron deficiency can be described in three stages, mild, marginal, and iron deficiency anemia. With a mild deficiency, serum ferritin concentrations and levels of iron in bone marrow decrease. With a marginal deficiency, iron storages are depleted. 
transferrin saturation decreases, and hemoglobin is within range. The final stage is iron deficiency anemia, which is when hemoglobin levels and hematocrit and MCV are low. As a result, red blood cells are small with low hemoglobin concentrations. Besides weakness and fatigue, those with iron deficiency anemia may also have impaired cognitive function, impaired body temperature regulation, difficulty concentration, and GI issues. Iron toxicity from dietary sources is not common with individuals who have normal GI function. Supplemental doses can reserve, re reduce zinc absorption and cause GI distress. If an iron supplement is prescribed, taking it with food can help with GI disturbances. Vitamin K, which refers to a family of compounds, is a fat-soluble vitamin that plays two major roles in the body, blood clotting and bone metabolism. The highest source of vitamin K would be green leafy vegetables, though there are small amounts in fermented foods like natto and cheese. Other sources include vegetable oils and some fruits. The AI for vitamin K is 90 micrograms for adult women and 120 micrograms for adult men. Vitamin K deficiency in adults is rare and typically secondary to other conditions like malabsorption disorders or those who are taking medications that interfere with vitamin K metabolism. Two signs of vitamin K deficiency are bleeding and hemorrhage with severe cases. There's no UL for vitamin K since risk of toxicity is low and no adverse side effects were seen with foods or supplements. There are some concerns with vitamin K and medications. Those who are taking anticoagulants need to maintain a consistent intake of vitamin K as drastic changes can increase or decrease the medication's effect.